Can you guys see what's missing? All right, so we got the McLaren, the Huracan, and we have the GTR, and we all know GT3 RS is there. And Maserati's over there. But where's my M3? So let's go ahead and go inside, and I wanted to explain to you guys very quickly uh, kind of what happened to my BMW M3 um, and, and the story behind that. So I hope you guys are ready for that. All right, welcome to another video with TechBuds Garage. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit more of an understanding of what happened to my BMW M3. A lot of you guys are familiar with, you know, if you guys ever followed me on my main channel, I bought this one about two years ago for about $25,000. I had the intention of selling that car for anywhere around thirty dollars to $33,000. And when I was posting it on OfferUp, I was actually getting offers at $29,000, $30,000, very close to my overall um, asking price of, of $34,000. I ended up selling the car about two or three days ago, literally the day after I bought the Huracan for $23,000. So I ended up taking a $2,000 loss on that BMW M3. But one of the things that I wanted to provide you with some insight on is I bought that BMW M3 literally two years ago. So if you think about how long I had that car, the type of car it is, um, and what I've been able to do with it, taking a $2,000 loss on a you know $25,000 on a $25,000 car um, is not the worst. Obviously, I could have done things a lot better. I could have gotten rid of it, right? So I could have sold it for a profit uh, shortly after I bought it. Um, I wanted to enjoy it a little bit longer. And you guys hear us talk about very often that we always try to focus in getting the best deal in our area. And what does that really mean and why is that important? I want you to know that I know that not everyone has the intention to buy something and right away sell it for a profit. But one of the things that I think that every person can do, making sure that they're getting the best deal depending on what car you're getting. So if you were to compare it, a $25,000 maybe brand new Honda Accord, what would that Honda Accord two years later after you drive it off the dealership be worth? And if you think about it and compare the two, even though I did take a loss, the overall loss that I took on that BMW M3 is actually very minimal. And in comparison to when trying to buy a Honda Accord that's brand new, driving it off the lot two years later, being worth maybe you know uh, 40, 50% of what you paid for it, I think at the very end of the day, uh, when it came down to purchasing that car, I made sure that I did my part in trying to get the best deal possible, that even if you know it didn't go according to plan, just like it didn't for the past two years, um, I ended up not selling it for a profit, but I enjoyed it and I really minimized uh, the amount of money that I lost on that specific car. So I think that we can all relate to that, that again, although that we might not all have the intention of buying something, an effort to sell it for a profit, that you can do your part as a you know active investor in making sure that you first step, uh, educate your Yourself, you know what that car is worth that you're about to buy and asking yourself is it going to depreciate right after you you know uh, buy it so if it's a brand new car that's usually what you tend to experience but if it's something that you can you know maybe buy a pre-owned or an actual used car in a way in a way that you know you bought it off offer up or Craigslist or something of that sort you can then really reduce the amount of money that you give back when it comes down to enjoying that car uh, the second thing um, I made sure that I educated myself I had a BMW M3 before it didn't have all the upgrades that this one did uh, but I was able to sell that one for $23,000 or $22,500 a couple uh, maybe a year before that uh, so I was at least aware of what that specific car was worth, but due to the upgrades, I wasn't too aware of, you know, I knew that it required a specific type of, in a sense, customer uh, to want that specific car due to all the upgrades. Uh, one of the last things that I want to talk about is the high volume or high demand cars. A BMW M3, yet alone a supercharged BMW M3, would not be something that just anybody would want, right? It takes a very specific type of individual to want to buy that specific car. And that's something that I encountered in this specific type of uh, you know, car. Uh, not everyone was interested. People wanted to pay either market value or below market value for that specific car due to the upgrades that it had. I found someone like you guys saw, his name was Nate, someone that was very into that specific car, wanted to work on that car, wanted to work on that car, and luckily I was able to get him a good deal for $23,000. So I uh, just wanted to share kind of my experience when it came down to something not always a going according to plan. Uh, I've done this very often with like the GTRs. I tend to break even with those after enjoying them for either a couple of months or about a year. Um, and this one just went a little bit different, right? It's not always about making a profit or breaking even, but making sure that you do your part and try 
trying to get the best deal possible. So down the road, regardless of what your intention is, you can either reduce the amount of money that you lose on that specific car or actually be able to come out on top and sell it for a profit. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think after two years of ownership for this BMW M3, if you guys think that I got it for a good deal, if I could have done something better, or if you break it down for you know having it for two years and losing uh, $2,000, if you think that that's something that you would even uh, consider doing yourself. So uh, I would love to be able to talk to you guys a little bit more about this. If you guys ever have any questions about car deals in your area, um, really feel free to jump on a call with us. That's gonna be that first link in the description. Of course, it's free, and we'd love to connect with you. We do have a free group. It's called the Flipping Wheels Group. It's it's absolutely for free. You can join our free Facebook group. That's going to be that second link in the description. If you simply maybe want to take on this summer and learn a little bit more about maybe this hobby that you can take on and make some extra you know, side money or just at least surround yourself with people that are also really into cars but also really into saving money and getting good deals. Really do appreciate you guys this time. Hope you earned your thumbs up. Hope you guys can subscribe. And like always, let's make sure that we're in the year on Green Now. Take it easy.